This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Thomas versus Legrand. You all have been engaged and together five years, and you all were supposed to get married last month, but canceled the wedding because of cheating allegations. Please tell me why you've opened this case. Well, because, Your Honor, we were supposed to get, we were supposed to get married last month. Right. But due to our, I'm constantly getting, like, guys coming to me in public talking about my fiance has been in their inbox wanting to meet up to have sex. <gasps> and... Really? I, yes. I, I have asked her about it, and every time she'll catch an attitude. She don't want to talk about it. She says just my insecurities. And we don't, we don't have no intercourse. She, oh. we, don't, we don't kiss. We don't sleep in the same room. So all that together is like, okay, I know something must be going on. Yes. Why are you not sleeping with this man? I be aggravated. He be bugging me and all this. How you gonna accuse me every single day and then, and then not wanna, and then want me to sleep in a room with you? No, you can sleep on the couch. Like, I don't do that. But why are all these guys <laughs> out there trying to meet up with you? I guess I'm good looking. I can't honestly <laughs> tell you. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking good. He look good. It's been plenty of women in my inbox, too, telling me they slept with him, but they don't have proof or receipts. So I just say that sounds like a personal problem. So, but, but talking about the warning signs, though, I mean, okay, you got all these people in your inbox telling you that she's cheating, but, I mean, why is that sending up red flags to you? Um, there was a time after all that we... She called me one day, and she was like, well, I don't want the relationship no more. I'm done. And she like, well, you need to get your things and get out. Wow. So, later on, I came back that night. I didn't have my house key, so I climbed up the balcony. Broke in and, through the window. No. I climbed up the balcony, and then I went through the back, the back, um, door. Broke in. And there she was, laying in bed with another man. Oh. Wait, that night? That night. Okay, so Miss Legrand, you break up in the AM and then you neck it with somebody else in the PM. Is that what that we doing? Even how it went? How it went was I had all I confided in a friend who just so happened to be a male. See, I'm not cool with females being friends because they seisty. You tell them you thinking about breaking up, they gonna go after your man. And I I wasn't naked. I had on a whole night outfit. He had on gym shorts and no shirt. We weren't no. naked though. All right, but it was, right, it was but, open uh, counter wrap on the hold, floor, hold, though. Hold on. You do understand when you go to someone other than your significant other about your issues with them, mm -hmm. you open a door. Because you, else. you, not only did you open that door, you put your foot through that door, and he's like, hallelujah. And he came right on in. <laughs> so you're back together. So oh, why yeah. do you think she's cheating now? That's what I want to know. Well, it was an incident that happened. Not too long ago, uh, her family had a uh, set that was throwing a 70s party. Okay. And she said, okay, we, me, and, me and you going to um, dress up. We're going to get our costumes for the party. So she called me later on while I was out finding my costume. And she like, nah, you don't need to come. I don't want you to come. And I'm like, why not? Okay. So did so, you go to the party? No. No, I didn't. Okay. And so... She came, she, she came back at 3 in the morning. She and came back home to you at 3 in the morning. What did you morning. say to her? And then, I, so she went to sleep. I went through her phone. I, I went through her phone. You waited I for her to go to sleep. And then you I waited for her to go to sleep. Her and I, I went through her phone. Okay. Come to find out, she was texting this guy, talking about meeting up. Oh, can I come over? And he's like, oh, can, oh are we going to, you know, have sex? And, she, and you know... Cause I got the paper right here. The um. Rob, right, oh. would you please get yeah, that? Sean. This was a text message that was in her phone. So she starts out, "What we doing when I come over?" The other man responds, "We like having sex off rip, which is like right away." She says, "Laugh out loud, of course." So this is what you find in her thing. Yes. So you think that night not being... She wasn't at the party at all. No, she That's was with that guy. That's why you couldn't be at the party, because she was out she was uh, really with having that sex, R.I.P. Yes. <laughs> off the rip. Yeah, off rip. Yeah. Right now. Miss LeGrand, were you having sex off rip? No. 
<laughs> Were you having sex at all? No, I can't Why explain it, that no, whole thing. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Why was this in your phone, then, if you weren't having sex off rip? It was a tip for tat situation. So like, I explained it to him at the party. Mr. Thomas was blowing my phone up, and he sent a whole book paragraph saying something that tipped me off. So I was like, you know what? I'm finna just set this up. I text my ex back. So we had a whole hour conversation. After the party, my family member, girlfriend, lives right around the corner from where me and him was living at at the time. So he dropped me off on the way home, and I never went to meet with this, this man. He even inboxed the dude and asked, did you sleep with my girl? Did y'all meet up that night? Yada, yada. The dude told him no, I told him no. Okay, it was... you know what? If it's one thing I could teach you all, tit for tat just kills both of you. There is no such tit for tat. There's no winner in tit for tat. I know. Mr. Thomas, no, it, it sounds like that uh, Miss Legrand is not very careful with her phone. And here's the mm -hmm. thing: if you find one set of messages, there's another set. So, yeah. have you found anything else in her uh, phone? Yes, That's how this uh, Another incident. She goes to sleep again. I go through her phone again, and I see the uh, I see a text message saying, "When can we meet up again, babe? I, I want to um, see you." And so I get I, I get the number from my um out of her phone, and I text the guy. I said, what did you and my fiance got going on? And he says, I was sending you all the texts and videos that been going on if you uh, cash at me $100. And... Listen do you have that? Listen. Do you have any evidence? Um, here go, um, part, this is uh, one of them right here. Ron, it was a, uh, um, that, that one right there was... So that's, he's... The, that's the cash. No, that's the cash out one. I was being mad. I told her she she, she needed to go. She need to just go or what or whatever. He texts me back and he's like, "Oh, so you kicking her out now?" So I'm like, I go back downstairs. I'm like, "Uh, so you still texting this guy right now?" And she's like, "No, ain't nobody texting him." I said, "So how you know that you get you um leaving?" You didn't and tell this guy you were kicking her out. No, I didn't. The tell only him. way he would know if she's texting him. If she's texting him right yes. there, right after it happened with you. Yes. Wow. And all of a sudden, he he sends a text back, and then that's what that text that one right there said. You so, should you should have spent you should have spent the money. So the text that you've given the court says, "What you mean?" And he responds, "Should have just spent the hundred. Yes. And so he said, "If you sent the money, you'd have had all the evidence you I needed." I had all the evidence. But listen to what you just said. Though. Okay, did you go and stay with this man? No, but we we. She even said it was. She said it was a I classmate. I even explained it to him. He came to my school. I'm a med student. I'm studying medicine. I had him tutor me. Not only me, but he was tutoring like three of us at the same time. But wait a minute. How did he know virtually in in a, a space of a few minutes? that you were being put out. Because I texted him and said, why are you causing conflict in my house? My man just told me I have to go. That's when he must have took it upon himself to text him and but say, you, you should have spent the you But you said you weren't texting him. I texted him and said, why he started messing with me and you? Mr. Thomas, yeah. all right, I've seen what you presented so far. Do, do you have any other reason to believe she's cheated? Another um, thing happened, uh, it was a girl. Uh, she sent me a, a video. It was a sex tape of her. Well, supposedly supposed, supposed to be her. It wasn't me. And a sex tape of Miss LeGrand? It wasn't yes. Miss LeGrand. Uh, it was somebody else. saying who. that your girl need to stay away from my man. And, it, and she said, yeah, it was a video. And um, it should, uh, I think... This you submitted it to the court? Yes, I submitted right. it to the court. Let's take a look at this video. And, and she had this scar on the video. I, I wasn't believing in her, but she scar. had this scar. And what is that a mole? No, it's the it's a exact scar that she had. It's it was, that she kept complaining about in the same spot. Do you not know how many black women probably got that same scar though? Well, <laughs> I gotta well, tell you, it it's it not anything uh, to a man, speak. A man, a man, no, a man it, knows his girl. A, a man knows it, it, his girl. A man knows his girl. How are you gonna know? You know what? I'm gonna leave that to you. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I know one thing. That ain't no Miss Legrand. That's somebody else. All right, Mr. Cutler, I think we have enough evidence. At this time, the court would like to call certified cyber expert Gus Dimitrellis to the court to find out, is she cheating?
Would you please share with the court your credentials? Certainly, Your Honor. I am a certified cyber expert and retired Secret Service agent under two presidential administrations. So tell us what you did to investigate this particular case. I directly took the phone from Ms. Legrand and I used advanced forensic software to go deeply dive into this analysis of the phone. Did you find any evidence of suspicious behavior in the phone? I did, Your Honor. I found the phone using call pattern analysis or device pattern analysis was inactive for months. In the past month, there was 1,012 text messages to and from Ms. Legrand. Oh. Okay. Of those 1,012 messages, 761 were from a specific contact named Jasmine. Upon further analysis, I discovered the contact, Jasmine, is not a real number. In fact, it does not even come back to a real person. It is coming through a text application. You believe that Ms. Legrand set all this up to fool you and this court? Exactly. In fact, I have some examples of some of the text messages from that phone. Okay, can we see those, please? And so the first one says, I'm with my family and he only want to talk because he want to ask me a hundred questions and make me repeat myself. And then this is the friend. Okay. Says, okay, Ma, he's wrong for accusing me, but to stop it, just tell him because ignoring it makes it worse. Try it. So the friend is really herself. With 100% certainty, this phone was deliberately set up for this court and there's another phone out there. This is a burner phone she gave me. I don't have a fake phone. I don't have a fake text now, whatever kind of app that is. I don't even do stuff like so that. So how do you explain the lack of activity I for so know. long? I don't know. I just became friends with her. That's her, his actual friend. He knows the girl. So do you I know Jasmine? Her every day. Do you know Jasmine? Um, I'm Jasmine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You use the app to be Jasmine? She always wanted a female best friend. And I, I came up with the app and to see, to text her to see what's going on and pretend like I was this girl so I can see what's actually wrong. I never saw this coming. <laughs> I, I, I have no words. This is one of the biggest shocks we've seen in this courtroom. I'm shocked too. I thought I was talking to a so-called best uh, friend and it's him. You got catfished by your own fiance. You can't build a, a sound relationship on deception for whatever reason you're doing it. Well, to further investigate this, the court will call at this time licensed private investigator Tommy Platt. Ron, please escort Mr. Platt in. You conducted a polygraph examination of Ms. Legrand, correct? Yes, sir. Right. You asked Ms. Legrand, during your relationship with Mr. Thomas, have you had sexual intercourse with the classmate? What was her response to that question? She stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. You also asked Ms. Legrand, the day you attended your family member's 70s party, did you have physical sexual contact with anyone other than Mr. Thomas? What was her response? She stated yes, she confessed. The examinee also stated that she hooked up with a guy after the party and that it has had sex with him several different times, mm -hmm. and this occurred this year. So, Mr. Grant, you got us all sitting up here thinking that, well, what's going on with this phone? And you got Mr. Thomas wondering, is he crazy? And all the time, you were with this person. The very I'm person he accused you of being for... with on the very occasion he accused you of being with him. I know. But, like I said, Do you I wait... have my reasons for doing it at the end of the day. I all do. right, okay. Now, if you don't want to be, if, you, if it's so bad between you two that you need to do this, then let him go. Yeah. Tell him that. Tell him that. He the one that don't want to let go. I've, in the past, I have tried to break up with him. He 
begs me, give it another chance. This, yeah. And then he cries, and then I cry. I love this you man. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe. I do love him. He is a soulmate, but he keeps accusing me and pushing me further and further away. He pushed me to want to do that. So, yeah, everybody can look at me like I'm the bad guy, but at the end of the day, I feel like I'm being pushed away from him out of the relationship. Mr. Thomas, how do you feel, hearing it now, all of your suspicions have been confirmed. What's going through your mind right now? I'm just hurt. Real hurt. You are worthy. You just need to find the person who knows your worth. Now, the flip side of that is... You can't bring all this baggage and the baggage before her to whoever comes along new. Because you're going to find yourself in the same rat race. You all have married. You've been together for 12 years. You've got two children together. But the future of this marriage depends on what happens here today in court. Is that right, Ms. Fisher? Yes, sir. You've got some concerns. You initiated this case. Tell us why. Well, I, my husband is a package delivery driver. He's been delivering packages for the last three years, and I feel like he's delivering more than just packages. He's delivering his packages. Oh, oh okay. So he's out there. Yes, he's uh -oh. out there. No, uh -oh. I'm not out there, Judge. Mr. Sample, are you delivering more than packages? No, nah, that's all I do. That's my profession. I'm uh, deliver a package delivery guy, and I love my wife unconditionally, and that's my job. I deliver packages to people's homes. And that's it? That's it. You're not delivering your package? No, me. I'm not delivering my package. All right, just that's for be my clear. wife. You know. that your, that's what your wife believes? Yes, that's what yes. she believes. But clearly, Ms. Fisher, you've got some concerns. Yes, I have some concerns. I did some research of my own, and I've noticed that a lot of women have affairs with delivery drivers, like package drivers, and I, I did a few research and found... Ron, would you get that item no. for us? You so did you... Some... Go ahead, love. You did some research, and did you talk to people? What did you do? No, I looked it up, and I was like, let me see if this is really going on. Like, am I the only one who be tripping or thinking that this is happening? So this first one says, I'm having an affair with the delivery man. And she says, I sit and wait for him to come to my door and bring me whatever package I'm waiting for. There's something naughty about a man That's bringing true. a package That's to the house true. when no one else is home. Oh. Hmm. And then this one says, I made a mistake with the delivery man. What should I do? And it's like she's getting advice. Hmm. I invited him in. I made sure everything was safe, but I'm worrying if there's any way my husband could find out. So you get these articles and you're like, so this is a thing. Mm -hmm. These sound like those letters yeah. you, you read in some of the steamier magazines and novels, uh -huh. like... Uh-huh. That don't mean it's not real. It's not fantasy? Well, it's that's the whole fantasy. point, is it that is people have this fantasy, and I bet there's some people who have executed on this fantasy, right? Yes. And you're concerned that that has happened with your spouse. That has happened with my spouse. So it's not just all in your head. It's a real thing. It's I mean, you've done thing. the research. It's a thing with women and delivery drivers. Yes. Not I only have I did research, it's a bunch of accusations saying, you know, got me thinking this way. All right, Mr. Sample. I mean, it's a thing. It's not just in her head. It's a thing. People have this fantasy about uh, delivery drivers. Uh... That's all it is. It's a fantasy. Like I say, I love my wife unconditionally. I work hard for my wife and my family. I'm out here every day in the sun, hot, cold, whatever type of weather it is, trying to perform a job, to come home to her, to make sure that we have the best he life that we can have. He says all this you know? stuff, but and words for us, her uh, accusing me of work. being out here, cheating on her, and doing these things with technology and stuff now. They monitor our movement, GPS. They oh, account for the times, that. That, how long it takes for us to make deliveries to certain stops, you know what I'm mean, mm -hmm. they, we don't have time for all that extraness. So, Ms. Fisher, I mean, you think he's cheating. He says he's not. He what is. are the warning signs you've seen? Okay, the first warning sign is, well, I had two phones, and they both came up missing. I had, me and a friend of mine had went to the casino one night, and we, uh, we was out kind of late, so I let him take the car to work the next morning. I normally drop him off at work, but I let him take the car to work the next morning. Where were your phones? in the glove compartment in the car. Okay. Okay. So when he gets off work, I 
go to the car to get the phones, and the phone's not in there. So I'm like, what happened to the phones? He's claiming Both phones he are missing. Me. Both phones are missing. Okay. So I called one of the phones to try to get in contact with a girl. An older lady answered the phone and was like, uh, yes, I bought this phone from off the internet and all this. So I'm like, well, I need this phone back. Is it away? Well, I paid this much money for the phone, so you have to pay me some for the phone. So I played it off like, okay, I'll pay you for the phone. And uh, she was like, can you meet me here at this gas station? I'm like, okay, I can meet you at the gas station. So I met her at the gas station. Mind you, this is the gas station that is in his route. His route where he delivery, his delivery route. Okay, we have a uh, Mr. Sample's delivery route. And so you have that black outline. So that's his whole territory that he delivers yes. in, correct? And you believe all the cheating that's going on is in his territory? Yes. I meet the next girl with the phone. She wants me to meet her at the same gas station that I got the first phone from. A different totally person, different person. Totally different but person. But the same gas station that's in his delivery territory. In his delivery territory. All right, Mr. Okay. Sample, how do you explain your wife's not one phone, but both phones that you say you put in the glove compartment come up missing when you had the car. My wife, she has a habit of leaving the car doors unlocked, so when her and her friend oh, went out God. to the casino that night, she possibly left the car open when she uh, had the phones in the car. And so, I'm like, I paid for the phones, you know. I, 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 I spent my money to buy the phones, so why would I allow somebody to come in and take something that I have to buy again, you know what I mean? So, what else makes you think that Mr. Sample is cheating with someone in his territory or route. Okay, it was a girl called his phone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. She texted his phone at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and the text said, can you talk? So, I didn't call back until later on that morning and when I called back, you could tell she lied about it. I asked her the first time, she, I don't know, somebody might have used my phone or... So, I just feel like they got something going on. Okay, well, let me ask Mr. Sample. First, let's start with the 2 a.m. text. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we'll get to the other part, but why are other women texting you at 2 in the morning? Like I say, my wife, she had just bought us some cell phones maybe a, a few weeks before this incident happened. So, like I told her, when you buy cell phones, a lot of times the uh, telephone numbers get recycled. And so, the number that I received possibly was a number that somebody previously who same had that area, same number had that phone. You know? code. So, when they call, she 100% of the time has a phone. You know, I don't even have a cell phone because of her insecurity and believing that I'm out here cheating. Don't nobody call my when, phone. When, so, so you're saying it wasn't number. anybody that you knew? No, Ain't no man calling my phone. And I wouldn't even be number. that disrespectful having anyone call my phone and knowing that she has the phone 100 percent of the time. So you just said something about the area code. What was that? I didn't want. I wanted to hear what he had the to say. Same area code that we stay in. That's in his route and everything. Three one four area code. That was the number that the you number, called back? Uh, yes. The number of the text that came it's in at 2 no in the morning? town number, no nothing, the same area. And then she acted like she hasn't it. received uh, phone calls from various people who were looking for someone else, but, you know, they end up calling her phone. I mean, people call the wrong number all the time and text the wrong number all the time, you know what I mean? But but do you understand why your wife is concerned? I That's understand the piece. that. I understand where she's coming from. Okay, you know, because I, even I'm sitting here going, I've gotten the random text or something like that. But, it, you know, mounting the evidence, it looks bad. It does look bad. I admit that. You know, but like I told her, I'm not out here on that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a different person. I'm not cheating on my wife. All right. And so, Ms. Fisher, have you yes. found any other reason to believe that Mr. Sample is cheating? Yes. He came home from work one day and with his uniform on and he had semen on his pants. <laughs> So, what? you just... He walked in, you see his pants, you automatically know that it's... Yeah, she just assumed that, no. you know... Oh, hold on, Mr. Sam. Hold on, Will. I say, what is that on your pants? Is that on your pants? Where was it on his pants? It was right at the crouch part. Okay, so it was in the front. Mm-hmm. By the yeah. zipper. Yes. Okay. And you look at it, and of and all the things that, that could possibly I'm be on the pants... the same thing I said. Hold on, Mr. Sam. How did you come up with it must be sexual bodily fluids? It looked like... Like, I know how semen look. <laughs> and 
it, when it dries up, it, it gives like a little white stain. And that's what was on her, a little white stain. It wasn't no ashes or nothing like that. It was a white semen stain. OK, let me ask you this question. Hold on, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> Did you take a closer examination of this particular like state? No, I didn't. All right, so you just kind of saw it from afar and said, oh, that must be what that is. Yes. All right, you didn't do a scratch and sniff. No, I didn't do a scratch and sniff. All right, well, then, look, you know that people are... We got sniffers that come right. from this courtroom, so I'm just I trying to make sure... I did that before, but I didn't do that this time. All right. Okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but okay. But, so you've done that before? Yes, I've, I've smelt him. Because you thought he was cheating? Because I thought he was cheating. OK, Mr. Sample? So, like, my wife, she's a stay-at-home mom, you know. I'm at work 100% of the time. She's at home most of the time. So, when she's at home, she allows herself to sit up here and wonder and think about what and I'm out here doing. that's what you think I do. I so, don't sit up and, and dwell with all the type day of job and worry about I do, what I'm doing. I touch doing. all I have, different I, types I, of Ms. Fisher, packages. hold on. I gave you a chance. Okay. Let me give him a chance. I touch all different type of packages. I touch stuff that could be corrosive. It could be powders. It can be different various things that people order. So... I, my uniform might be greasy, it might have well, oil stain, it could excuses. have anything on it. So, like I told her, you just can't sit and assume that what you... Because you see a stain on there, that that's what that is, particularly. You don't... But, do Mr. Forensic. Sample, here's the thing. Maybe there was something else there, maybe there wasn't. But the point is, she looked at this and she ruled out everything else that she's probably has seen over the, you know, time that you all been together. She ruled all that out and said, that's what that is. And here's the reason. It was a particular kind of stain in mm -hmm. a particular place. A... If it had been up on your shirt, yeah. she might have been I like, ah. Of but like... because of where it was <laughs> and what it looked like, oh yeah, she's made this leap. So like I say, she just just very insecure, and she just. What do you think? You made me this way. I didn't well, and I was about to say, how do you feel when he way. calls you insecure? I don't want to do nothing with him. I don't want to. You know, I try to make it cool because we got kids and everything together, but it has affected me to where I be hurt. I'm, like, I'm just depressed and sad all the time. Like, and I, I don't want to keep on dealing with it. And then she don't think I be depressed and sad that. when she deny me her, you know? Well, Mr. Sample, how does it feel in your household being constantly accused of cheating? It hurts because I have three boys, and like I say, I'm not uh, a perfect uh, father, but I try to be a good example to them. And I don't want them growing up believing that, oh, Dad, he just cheated on my mom, or, you know, I try to do the best for them that I can. And I don't lie to them. That's why he lied about it, because he don't want them, this you know? to come out. That's why he I'm lies not worried about, about anything. Everything because I'm sure about myself. Because he don't know? want this to affect his kids, so I'm he just don't sit and keep I'm leading sure me myself. on while you do what I'm you do. I'm not leading you on. Yes, you like are. Like I say, I've been here with you okay, 100%. We'll see. Okay, all right. Wow. This is a lot. It is. And here's the thing, Cutler, is I hear the hurt in both of them. Yeah. You know, he, she is torn up. She's sad. She says she's depressed. And she believes she's cheating. And he's saying, it isn't me. I'm doing what I can I'm to make this all right. I'm working, I'm busting my butt, I'm trying to be a good father, I'm doing stuff around the house. I check. And, I... you know, even though I wanted to, I couldn't cheat because of how, what my job has me doing. So all of this is just causing frustration on both sides. Absolutely. So, well, to help you all resolve that frustration and to get some answers as to what exactly is going on, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Now, right. the court, Mr. Platt, and... Tommy Platt. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, sir. I've been a licensed examiner for over 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 examinations. Ms. And... Fisher, you look really nervous. Are you nervous, love? I am, because I'm going to be so hurt. This is gonna be so hurtful because all he had to do was tell me the truth. That's all I want was like the I told, truth. I, I, rather, I, I, told I the feel truth. more better if he be honest with me. I'll have like more I respect for him and everything if he had to just kept it real. It's, it's a lot. It... Like I Mr. Like Sample, I... I, I, you know, seeing this beautiful young lady broke down like this, I gotta say this to you. I feel that you're a hardworking man, okay? But if you've got something you need to say before Mr. Platt gives his expert testimony, I implore you 
to share it with your wife now? I don't have anything to say. Like I say, I love my wife unconditionally, you know, and it's like she want me to believe her truth, but then she don't want to believe my truth. Like, my truth is a lie, you know, and that's right. unfair to me. All right. Are you sure you're ready for this, Miss Fisher? Yes. All right. Are you sure you're ready, Mr. Sample? Yes, sir, I'm ready. All right. Mr. Platt, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Sample. You asked Mr. Sample, did you have physical sexual contact with either of the two women that Ms. Fisher met at the gas station who had her cell phones? What was his response to that question? He stated no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Hold on, there's one more. You asked Mr. Sample, during your marriage, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife? What was his response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've heard these results, uh, how do you feel? What's going through your mind right now? I feel a relief. Like, this is why I really needed for us to move forward. Like, it's a uh, relief. And now we could work on us being a married couple and us learning how to love each other. That's another thing. We need to learn to love each other, open up more to each other, and, you know, communicate more. And maybe and I'm like gonna I told, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. If it takes us to go to marriage counseling, if we have to, whatever it takes to better us as a couple. You all have been in a relationship for three years? Yes, ma'am. And you've been living together about eight months? Yes, ma'am. All right, tell me why you brought your boyfriend here. Your Honor, I'm here today because I think that my boyfriend is cheating on me with my best friend of 18 years. We've been So your entire since, life? Since kindergarten, yes, ma'am. Do you have that awful feeling in your gut? Yes, ma'am, I do. Woman's intuition has kicked in. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what that feels like. Well, I mean, it, it's very hurtful because he treats me better than any man that I've ever had before, and... Our relationship is very important to me. We don't share children, but the children that I have, he takes very good care of. It's devastating because, you know, I don't want my children to lose that, and that's what would have to happen if, you know, I find out that it is true. All right. All right. Mr. Mr. Elliott, she's accused you of cheating with a lifelong best friend. What do you have to say about that? I'm here to prove my point. I mean, I'm here right here today. Just prove my love to her. I mean, you know, I've been with her for three years. She's done an awful lot for me. She uh, loves her kids. Her kids are most important to me, just like they're my own. You know, I'm just here to you know, just to prove that, you know, there's none of that going on. I mean, I'm here for you. I'm going to always be here for you. And right. I'm just ready for it to stop. How did you two meet? My brother brought me over one day and we both was kind of in a relationship at the time, but it was just something about her when she walked by, it just, she caught my attention in my eye. And my brother, you know, had brought a comment to me and said, hey, you know, she kind of like you. And I was like, okay. Ah! <laughs> so before right, you and, made the move, you had to know it was a move to make, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. And Ms. Roden, what was it that you liked about Mr. Elliott? Um, well, when we first met, he was a perfect gentleman. He wasn't, you know, the type of guy that wanted to come, you know, let's go hang out at my house or, you know, let's chill. Like, no, he wanted to go out on dates. He wanted to do stuff. He wanted to get to know me before he did anything. Um, it took almost a month for us to even kiss. Um, and, like, I had, look, we were sitting in the car and I was like, we have not kissed yet, you know? It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. You know, I never really thought about it before then because he made me feel so special in other ways it didn't matter. Being a gentleman, all right? I like that. I like that. And she's smiling the whole time. The whole time you talk her, she's smiling. <laughs> Um, what went wrong? Well, we had, like, a small issue with his ex. Like he said, you know, when we first met, we were both kind of seeing other people. But we both resolved that, and we forgave each other for, you know, things that had happened in between that time. But then there was a time that, you know, he had went out of town for work, and I was looking on his social media, and there was uh, someone that was just liking every single picture on his, you know, social media. So I wrote her. She immediately started sending me screenshots of their conversation. He, like 
wrote her and, you know, what are you doing? How have you been? And I want to see you and send me pictures and, really? you know, stuff like that. How old were those messages? Well, I mean, at that time, it happened that day. But, I mean, this has been now a year and a half old. But, you know, right. that's when things kind of... My trust was like... Mr. Elliott... So it makes you suspicious of him in general? Yeah. Okay, did right. this happen? Not quite like how she said it. We just had a friendly conversation. That's all it was, I mean... But can you understand why she would be a little upset about when can I see you? I'd be a little tight about that. And uh, can you send me a picture? But it wasn't no, no, can you see me? In, uh, can, I can't see you. It's like... So, so what it was it? It's like, I haven't seen you in a while. You know, could you send me a picture? It wasn't like, no... <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So... Uh, no, no, no. But... No. But if... No. No. <laughs> no. Not even... No, if... not even. Not even a little bit. So okay. let me just okay. put the kibosh on that. All right, okay. I don't care so... how long. Well, okay, but an old friend you haven't seen in a while, it's like, hey, how's it going? Send no. me a picture. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cup. Especially when you know it's somebody that they've had relations in the past. Oh, no, no, no. no, nope. no that's wasn't a no. no relations. I don't know where you get relations from. So, okay, was, was this was an old girlfriend? Re- yeah. No. Was this someone you hooked up with maybe once or twice? No. Was this someone you had any kind of romantic inclinations about? No. So, no. why does she think that you all had a relationship? See? Okay, now. No. But, That's still a no. But it was... It was a no? It was it, no one that he had any kind of... It's gonna be a no. We can do this all day. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Cutler. All right, let me ask this. Okay, so that's one incident. Okay. But what is it that he is doing that makes you think that he is sleeping with your best friend? I go on lunch, and I usually go to Terika's house for lunch, and, um... I pull up at Terika's house, and um, both of their cars are there, and I'm, like, pounding on the door for, like, 10 minutes. Nobody comes to the door. Okay, wait a minute. (laughs) Really? (laughs) So, did you know that your boyfriend was going to be there? No. I'm sure you had a conversation with somebody about that. Well, (laughs) after I banged on the door for 10 minutes, like I said, I was on lunch break. Once I get home, he's at home, and, you know, I question him about it, and he acts like he didn't even... He wasn't even there. He doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Um, So, he's like, you know, he just parked his car there or something. You know, I'm just like, (laughs) really? All right. (laughs) Mr. Elliott, your car was at Terrica's house. Yes, sir. At lunchtime. Yes, sir. Did you hear her pounding on the door? No, but it wasn't no 10 minutes. Okay. Why didn't you come to the door? Because, you know... No, I don't know. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Mr. Elliott, you're gonna have to explain that one to me. I mean, the door came open. We opened the door. And what happened when the door opened? She kind of had that look on, like, what's going on, but you couldn't say what's going on. The door never came open. That's what I'm confused about. The door never came open. Like, I had to leave, because I had to go back to work. Are there any other incidents? Well, then, one day, I'm on my way home from work, and I passed them riding in his car. So I turned around and followed them, and they were headed towards my house. We pulled, all pulled up in the driveway, and they just made it seem like, you know, they just went out to lunch, and there was no big deal, and I was just crazy for even, you know, thinking something was going on, and I was like, you know, I'm not an idiot. Did you talk to your girlfriend about this? I mean, I had a conversation with her about it, and she was like, Leanna, you know better than that. You're my best friend. We just went to dinner, and it's nothing like that. And I'm like, well, why... How would you feel if I went to dinner with your boyfriend? And you can't think of any reason why they would be in the car together just kind of hanging out? No. Shortly after the dinner incident, I come home and they're just Kiki and Kaka on the phone. And as soon as I walk in the door, he hangs up the phone. And I see her name on the screen and I'm like, you know, what is all of that about? Oh, we're talking about lunch. We're talking about what happened at lunch. And my gut just tells me that it's something not right. All right. And Mr. Elliott, it's your position that there's nothing going on with her best friend, Terrica. Nothing at all. So your gut is saying, it's doing this. Mm -hmm. Danger, danger. Okay, do you understand why she would feel that way? I can see when you said that, but sometimes it doesn't mean what you think it is. All right. Well, you haven't given us much to think that it ain't what we think it is. (laughs) Can you help us understand why it isn't what it looks like? I bumped into her one day, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm planning this. Would you help me? Okay. She helped me, you know, what I was looking for. And she helped me out through the whole thing. Terrica, she's a great, wonderful friend. I love her just as much as she does. It sounds like something's All right. a foot. Well, in order to get to the bottom of this, the court has tracked down the best friend, Terrica. 
Ron, would you please escort Terika into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Hi, could you come in, please? What's your full name, please? Terrica Gunn. All right, Ms. Right. Gunn. And you have been best friends with Ms. Roten since kindergarten. My whole life. What is your relationship like with Mr. Elliott? Um, I guess my friend, because that's my best friend's boyfriend. I know him through her. I met him through their relationship. Only way I know him is because of my best friend. All right, so do you all talk? Do you all communicate? What's your... What's the nature of your relationship? What do you mean do we talk? Do you text each other? Do you talk on the um, phone? Here recently, I can say we might talk a little more than usual. But aside from that, no. When I see her, I see him. We all hang out. We all talk. We all eat together. But yes, we, we've talked a little more than usual, but not aside from what we've been talking about. Okay, so have you been having an affair with Mr. Elliott? I have not. I can't even believe I'm here about this. Can I tell a story? <laughs> I just want to tell y'all what I'm here about, first of all. My best friend calls me, and she's like, girl, I think Quinn cheating with this girl. We finna get her. Guess who the whole bag is? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> if, if I got this straight, your friend calls you and said, look, we're going to court because I want to find out if he's cheating, and we're going to track down this... She had a whole... We had a whole situation. We got a certain girl that we come here to find out about. We had everything, and me is me now. And she didn't tell you it was you? No! I so found... you shocked... The, you yes, shocked. Yes, yes! Were you afraid to tell her who you thought it was? Yes. Why? She's my best friend. And that's and my know I wouldn't do nothing like that. So it's, it's, a, it's such a hard situation. It was just hard to, you know, let her know that that's what we were coming for. So you and your heart of hearts, do you believe that she's she doing not. this? Oh, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the tears in your eyes as you talk about this. Do you believe your best friend is cheating? I just, I've, I've, I've got that gut feeling, but I don't want it to be true. I don't this gut too. feeling that you have, can you describe it? Your stomach just feels sick, you know, like when you see something or when you hear something, certain things happen, like the telephone calls and stuff, you know, it just makes you feel like, you know, it just, I don't know how to explain it. That's the best way I can explain it. When you look across and see them just standing there together. <laughs> how does that make you feel? <laughs> Mad. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Mad um, too. Me too. Me three. Well, when you have a situation where a woman is feeling that she's being scorned, we felt it necessary to have a person come and share what that is like someone who has been scored, who has had a triangle relationship, she believes, with her best friend and her man. And so we have invited Miss Mimi Faust to come and share with us. Miss Faust is a reality television star, a successful businesswoman who appears on her own program, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Ron, would you escort Miss Faust in, please? Yes, Miss Faust. Hi. Please come here across the front here. Ms. Faust, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We need your help. We need your expertise. How has infidelity impacted your life? Uh, it's made me more aware. It's made me think about things a little different. It's actually raised my self-esteem um, going through these situations. What are the warning signs a partner should be on alert for in a situation where there may be infidelity? When your partner switches up on you, um, extra phone calls are coming in, he's staying out a little bit later, um, you know, when you have that gut feeling and you feel something is weird or strange, that's a sign. All right, so in this case, Ms. Roden says that she has that feeling, that there are interactions between the two of them that just make her feel like something's going on. She sees them together in the middle of the day. Uh, she sees them in the car together. Is that something that be a red flag? Absolutely. They better have a damn good reason why they're together. Have you ever had an experience where a partner was cheating with a friend? Oh, boy. <laughs> I know, that's like a rhetorical question. <laughs> tell us about it. Just tell us about it. Oh, my God. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was... He had her in his phone under, you know, a different name, and 
you know, the person is calling in the middle of the night and I'm, I'm like, why is your phone ringing at four and five in the morning? And, oh, it's my homeboy from the studio. And it was just crazy. You had this gut feeling at some point. It felt like I swallowed a cinder block. Oh, That's no. what it felt like. That was a good explanation. <laughs> is, that, is that how you feel, Ms. Rose? Yes, that was a good explanation. Yeah. Based on your experience, what can you tell them? Well, for you, just communication. You should talk to him. You should talk to your friend, if she's mm -hmm. your friend, especially if it's been your friend oh, the for many court. years. The court. Hold on, let him talk. Have, have, y'all need to communicate. You need to get all the information, and if it doesn't feel right after that, then you need to just leave it alone. Period. It's not worth going through something and you getting hurt behind it if, if he's not being faithful to you. And I hope to God, best friend, that you were right. being a best friend. Mm -hmm. That there has to be a good reason. Damn good. For them to be together. Absolutely. Especially if she's not around so and she doesn't so know about it. Yes. All right. Ms. Gunn? Yes, sir. Is there a good reason why you and Mr. Elliot have been spending so much time together? There is a very good reason for it. We've been planning something, and honestly, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a hard shell because this wasn't the plan. Just put it out there, please. Look, I'm, this, this is what I wanted to say right here. I was T-bone in a motorcycle wreck. This woman right here took care of me. I do everything a man's supposed to do. But that really doesn't answer the court's question. The question is, why are you spending so much time with your girlfriend's best friend? What this is that? Right here. That's why. And we had a big plan. We That's were planning a nice an friend. engagement for her. Wow. Oh. <laughs> but she's always thinking something's going on. Is that a damn good reason? That's a, that's a, that is a damn good reason. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Those are different kind of tears. Where's the cinder block now? Is it gone? It's gone. <laughs> All right, what you got to say? For, first, I do apologize to both of you very much, and I love both of you so much. Um, second, um, I guess one reason why I, I am so, you know, like that with him is because that's the best man I ever had. I've never had somebody be as good to me as he has, and... Every man that I've been with has done me wrong in some kind of way. Congratulations. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Elliott, would you like to make it a moment right now? Yes. 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 Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It won't be go any home. proposal <laughs> out there in the world like this one. Oh, gosh. Leanna Roden, she married me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 